Well, in our estimation, in the, in the short season that, that we've all been in, this is one of the uh, best offensive teams um, to come in to, to Assembly Hall in some time. I mean, this is the best Evansville team that, that we've seen personally since we've been here. And obviously their start, uh, their scoring average, uh, their offensive abilities with shooting the three, getting to the foul line, and uh, their field goal percentage is tremendous. They play very hard defensively. They do a great job of, of rotating and, and taking away driving lanes and, and doubling the post. I'm sure we'll see that tomorrow night. And uh, they're playing at an extremely, extremely high level. The improvement of some of their players, really starting with Valentine, who I know is fourth in the country and scoring an average of 30 points a game, to see where he has come as being a very good player in high school to being really on the road to being an elite guard in college is, is really good, speaks volumes about the way Evansville is developing players and coaching them and, and uh, the league that they play in. So there's no doubt that we have got uh, to be at a high, high level of intensity, energy, and intelligence on the defensive end. We feel like there's a ton of room for improvement with us, and we try to uh, learn from that and see if we can absorb that, especially uh, from the, not just the game the other night, but the two games, and really over a six game period, but especially the two games in New York. And uh, there is a lot of room for improvement with us. There's a lot of room for us to improve our running game uh, offensively. There's a lot of room for us to improve uh, the tempo offensively and defensively that we want to be able to play at. Certainly there's a ton of room for us to improve our ball handling, our ball security, our decision making and we need to cut the turnovers down. And uh, like I told them, we don't want to play slower. We want to play even faster, but we want to play with more intelligence, better decision making, and uh, play just a little bit simpler. You know, I think right now when you have young guys, uh, they don't understand the difference between the single and the home run. And I think we're, we're, in, that, we're in that ballpark a little bit right now. And we're trying to, to show them every bit of film uh, and make every example and do everything we can possibly do to show, help them make it easier for them. Because I think what they'll figure out is the better your fundamentals, the easier your decision making becomes. Um, the more you, the, the more you slow down a little bit in the sense of of what the next pass is, where it's at. The more you can speed up, the more the game can speed up, so to speak. So we're really trying to get that. Um, figured out a lot of room for improvement, but we're making improvement. We're a lot better team than we were when the season started, and we know we're going to have a uh, uh, high, high level of, of uh, work to do tomorrow night. So there's a level of improvement. Are there stretches though, that you're seeing where you're, you're watching them and thinking, yeah, these guys are getting it? Oh, I think we're absolutely getting it. I don't, I don't think there's any question about that. And, and uh, uh, I mean, really, they went, they went inch for inch, you know, pound for pound uh, with a veteran team that really had changed their tempo for the game and, uh, and, and slowed the tempo way down. And, uh, but at certain times, you know, we didn't, we didn't speed it up when we could have. And uh, uh, for a team to be in their sixth college game and to have it be a grinder like it was the other night and for them to, to be in the position they were in, we, we certainly didn't play what I wouldn't, would even reference as well but we played really hard. And now we've got to take the next step of being a smarter team and a um, uh, little bit, just a little bit, make it just a little bit easier. And, and I do think that uh, they're getting that, but it's going to take some time. I don't have any doubt about that, but we're trying to be very impatient out in the film room and in the practice floor. Was the locker room after that game and, and on the trip back, it was it kind of where you wanted it to be in, in terms of not accepting loss, not being happy that they challenged so Yeah, I don't late. think we had anybody in that room. Yeah, yeah. it was, uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't come back. Uh, uh, this program is, is um, we're not in any stretch where we come in and reward good effort and reward playing hard and reward uh, being in it. And, and I, I meant everything I said there. I mean, Shabazz Napier is a major league player. They have something of everything. That's why they, 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 can, they can control the paint. They can score from three. They can give you versatility with their forwards. They've got, they can be interchangeable at the guard spot. I mean, they bring so many things. It's a recipe for getting a lot better. But at the same time, that, that's, uh, there, there's, 
there, there was nothing that we walked in here and allowed anybody or I don't think they were looking to feel good about it. I think they're looking to get better. Tom, with the, uh, the adversity that Noah had, and maybe the first time on a basketball court, he really had that much adversity. I mean, how much does that help him moving forward now? Well, we'll see. I mean, he, he, uh, he stayed in it uh, the entire way. And uh, I don't think it's going to be the last time uh, for anybody. And I think all you have to do is look around the country and see the, the, uh, the differences in games, you know, some nights. And, and it's, it's just uh, the adjustments that are being made. But we also saw where we, we uh, hurt him with fouls. We ran a play the wrong way uh, at the beginning. And instead of Yogi using the ball screen, he refuses it. Well, Noah's cutting through. Noah ends up getting a brush foul. Uh, we didn't take on the pick and roll uh, on the second foul. So Noah is in a situation where he's standing out there to set a screen. He hasn't played enough at this level yet to know it's okay to slip it instead of us coming off the screen right away and running the action through. We, we, there was a lot to learn from that game. The foul in the post, you know, we could play that game again and, and that call may never get called. I mean, it's just the way that it is. I mean, I don't have faults with it. But there's a lot for us to learn on both sides of the ball. And Noah's no different than anybody else. In terms of their three-point shooting, I, mean, I think they're only averaging something like 11 attempts a game, but they're making, I think, more than 50%. What, what allows them to get such quality looks? Well, it reminds us of our teams. You know, we always said we led the BCS for two straight years, or over a two-year period in three-point shooting, but we we're nowhere near on the attempts. They're, they're not hunting threes. They're, they're a spacing team. Uh, our guys will, will see more cuts, screens, uh, flare screens, curls. They'll see more of that in 10 minutes than they might see in three weeks and, and, and tomorrow. And, and uh, uh, they're very good at that. You know, they're very, very good. And right now they're, they're shooting the ball with great confidence. Blake Simmons is at 40. Uh, Wing, I think, is 6 of 8. Valentine's numbers are just, I mean, like their Xbox numbers, their whole team is. Uh, so I think they're, they're, they're very good at finding their isolations. They're very good at uh, being uh, relatively creative out of, out of a couple certain actions that they run that you have to be prepared for. I think it's going to put a ton of pressure on us uh, as a young group to, to go against that type of movement offensively. And um, frankly, it'll be great for us to do it. I mean, as, as a coach and as a long term project here, you know, for this season, which is what your early season is all about getting ready for. It'd be great for us to have to do that. But at the same time, we want to come up, we want to be effective. And we, we can't be passive at anything that we do. And the bottom line is you've got to be alert and aware constantly because they may be only taking a small amount of threes, but they're getting a lot of shots up. And and if you're if you don't stay down on shot fakes and things like that, they're going to the foul line. You mentioned just Valentine and the improvements he's made What's different? What, what do you think? Quick, quick feet. Quick feet. I mean, it's, it's a, that's always where we start. And, and um, uh, to me, you know, with, with the feet of the, of the shooter, you, and you've got to have a certain amount of hands. But he has uh, done a great job with his body. Uh, they've done a fantastic job because their, their players are, are better. Their strength conditioning, their development, it's, it's all there. He's, uh, he's mixing it up. He's going both ways, uh, right and left got the pull up, he's got the floater, he's doing a great job of getting fouled, um, and he's just got quick feet and his release looks the same every time. So I would think it's, I don't know him like that, but I would think it's just hours and hours and hours in the gym, you know, perfecting his stroke. Did you, uh, at any level, did you guys recruit him? Uh, early on, early on, but we, we, you know, our focus went in some different areas uh, with guys like Yogi and Jeremy, but I mean, he's certainly, he was somebody that, that we followed, and, uh, and and he's good. There's no question about it. But I mean, I'm, we're also we also have Hunter and, and and Jeremy and Yogi and right. things like that. So, is the mood any different? You know, maybe a practice coming off a loss than it has been. You know, heading into games. Uh, no, they're learning that the win doesn't guarantee that 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 we're walking into the film room and. Um, uh, you know, roast marshmallows, so to speak. I mean, we're, we're in there, we're, we're, we're searching for big improvements because we know what's in this team. And and uh, um, I don't know, you you have to try to speed the process up where you can, but also to keep perspective and how you grow with it. But, but there was nobody that walked in or got into the plane on Saturday, got home. We had guys coming into the gym on Saturday. 
and we took the day off. And, and there was nobody walking in on Sunday that I didn't think understood that we that, that we played a really good team and we came up short. And and our job is to to define the reality of what could have been better, and and show them how we're going to get to that point. And as this was a great learning experience for them to understand, it never ever comes down to the last play. And and we learned a little bit about that in the Long Island game, but we won the game. So in this game, when you don't win the game, there were so many other plays throughout the game. And and the biggest thing you try to get across to a team is that every play matters. You know, every possession matters. It sounds so corny, but it's absolutely true. And, you know, the, the proud fact is we played so hard and we could have been knocked out of the game numerous times on Friday night, especially with a young team. And, and I've coached teams a lot older than that, that that may not have been able to weather that storm in that environment the way that it was. But but that didn't affect them. We just, there were enough things that that we didn't do right, that we could, that we should have done better throughout the game. The turnovers in the first half were absolutely excruciatingly painful for our for our game. And uh, you don't you don't the score isn't indicative of what it's going to be like at the end of the game in the first half. But but how we played put us in a hole, and and we had to get a lot better in the second half. We did, but how we played in the first half really hurt us. I guess just the. Not about Evansville, but the announcement of the Maui Invitational in two years. Uh, obviously, you've taken this program there once. Just what does it mean to be, I guess, assuming a pretty fairly regular participant in a tournament like that? Well, a lot greater anticipation going into it than we did our first year. You know, I, I promise the beaches will still be the same and it'll be nice and sunny, but um, that, that was a tough trip. But it was a great trip that you get to take a team over there, but it was tough walking into the environments that we did, of, or I should say the environments. The environment's not tough to walk into. The opposing teams are tough to walk into. But I didn't even realize the field till I saw it today. So obviously, uh, it's something that our fans will be excited about. It's something that our, our players will be excited about. We've been recruiting to it a little bit. We'll recruit to it even more. And it gives you an incredible uh, measuring stick early in the season. Uh, I don't think anybody Back to back the other night was really hard for our team, for a young team to go through that. You know, they'll be better for it after going through it. But but now to go back to back to back, you know, is 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 really tough. And that'll be great uh, when you get into a situation like that against that type of quality of teams. So or teams. So we're looking forward to that. Probably said that's way out in the future. Yeah, I probably haven't thought a whole lot about it other than seeing that field today. So I can't tell you that I've wrote any postcards to anybody asking to join us. I mean, obviously that's way out in the future and you don't know who's going oh, to exactly. happen for anybody. We could be very young. Yeah. We could be very young when we go there. I was going to say, I mean, do you look at those, like considering just sort of where you're at right now, do you think, okay, this is a, that's a year I'd like to go there? That's a, no, 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 not with Maui. You can't do that with Maui. I mean, we, we've had this scheduled for, for some time. Hmm. You know, really when you're really, when you've got your program rolling, you're in a pretty much a, a four, you're in a rotation of four years. Well, the Big Ten is so good, so that changed it. But then, obviously, in 2008, we weren't rolling. So it took a while to get that back. We're, we're, we can be pretty selective with, with our tournaments and things like that. And, and you, we certainly know that we want to get places for recruiting and for our fan bases because where they're so strong. It, we're always looking at something that's going to make sense. But when you can get Maui, you have to take that. I mean, there, there's there's no question. I think we're at the fourth game, right? We'll have an extra yes, game. Right. Yes, we'll have a fourth game. So that's really what we've tried to stay. Some coaches just like the three games. Personally, I like the four games, and so we'll uh, we're, we're trying to look at situations that are always going to give us that. But uh, we haven't made a decision for next year. But when you can get Mao, you have to get on the you got to get on the calendar. Anything else? All right, we're going to make the announcement of Max right now. Go right ahead. time to do that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, obviously his paperwork's in. Max is somebody that the first time we saw him, uh, it was extremely intriguing watching him work out and work out with his coach, and it was just shooting. And then came home and watched film, and it became a lot more than intriguing. It became, this guy absolutely fits what we do. And again, it starts with the feet. He's got tremendous feet. He's got uh, great hands. Uh, even what we're learning now, his passing ability, his ability to have quick hands, get deflections, be alert and aware defensively. He, he may be behind in technique and fundamentals and strength, 
and all those kind of things. But I think when you have some of those, nat and I don't mean behind in high school, but I mean behind coming in when you look at a guy getting ready for college. But in the sense of being able to uh, impact the game, not only on the offensive end, but I think he's also going to be able to impact it on the defensive end because I think he's going to have the ability to, to, to be a good help defender. He's going to get way better on the ball. I was sold uh, when I watched him play pickup and I watched him go against a really, really good wing player and play as hard as he did in any of the games. It, it really becomes one of those things, if he can show it to you a couple times, we can get him to the point where he can show it to us all the time. But his shooting stroke is, is phenomenal. He's got range, he's got feel. I think it's gonna get better as his strength gets better. I think putting the ball on the floor is gonna get better as his strength gets better. I love that he's coached by Chris Sparks. Uh, just like I like the fact where other guys are coached, I think uh, big on program development. And then there were some people that I respect in basketball out west and the east that had, had seen more than I had seen that reiterated what we already felt. Not, not necessarily what somebody scouted him as, but people that maybe know us a little bit. And so without, without question, you get excited uh, anytime you can get a guy that's, that you can see a little of Steve Novak in for me, you can see some Will Sheehy in, and you got a guy that absolutely wants to be here and is a gym rat, and you know it's only going to get better, it's, it's, a, it's a very good get. And, and there was no doubt that we wanted to improve our, our ability to shoot the ball from the outside. And when that became an opportunity to get somebody at that position with that skill set and future skill set, it was a no-brainer for us. Any questions on that? All right. Thanks. Thank you.